okay so uh, i've put down few points i've noted down few points broadly on what might help you when uh, it comes to your preparation okay so uh, someone actually when uh, i was preparing and i was uh, very tensed okay i'll tell you honestly uh, before prelims i was not confident i would clear prelims and that okay and once i cleared prelims before mains i was not con i was, I'm, i'm not making this up okay i was honestly totally 200% not confident that i'll clear mains after that came prelims after sorry uh, my interview and even after interview i was like okay agala anta okay but somehow fortunately god's grace i suppose uh, everything went on smoothly and i am here standing in front of you trying to tell you how you may also clear uh, your upsc or kpsc exam whatever you are going to write fine so uh, so one one day i was actually very nervous as to what would happen uh, i had given around two attempts earlier and i couldn't clear and i had taken a break as well i did my i pursued my law i did my llb and i thought i'll give one more attempt as well and i was very nervous because what is my future the biggest problem with respect to upsc and kpsc is that what do you do when you are not able to clear if you are able to clear in your first attempt you are lucky enough there is nothing that's going to stop you it's only your limitation okay but what do you do when you don't clear and i've been in that particular spot or position or what do you say in that instance where what is going to happen if i don't clear even this particular time okay because that's a big question mark because the main problem with respect to upsc or kpsc is that many people start following or pursuing this particular passion and end up spending 3 years 4 years 5 years i have friends who have not worked a single day in their life and they have spent the last 6 to 7 years only behind uh, running behind upsc and kpsc so the problem is what are you going to do there is absolutely no guarantee that you are going to clear this time there are many people i have personally seen who become ips officers for example and they write the very next prelims and they are not even able to clear the prelims so how do you have the confidence that uh, you will also be able to clear okay so the only one thing that i want to tell you is that if you are low on confidence it is good because when you are low on confidence it will actually push you to try harder to read more to do more because if you already have a lot of confidence it will never ever push you to do more okay so i personally feel i understand everybody says uh, have confidence you should be very positive and uh, this is what is the mantra to clear the exams if you go with the positive mood and confidence etc etc blah 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 okay. but i personally feel if you are low on confidence it will always push you to do more but i always want you to remember this this is something which uh, i would say someone wise wrote it down gave it to me and said remember future beyond upsc is going to be good so the only thing that i want to tell you is that please don't decide your fate or your future on upsc you may clear or you may not clear whatever it is it is okay okay please don't have that burden behind you that you is clearing upsc or kpsc is your main goal and if that is not going to happen everything else is lost so always take the exam as an opportunity and not a task always take the exam as an opportunity where you can do more where you can actually show your personality or your at, uh, aptitude and not as a task or a punishment so if you have this attitude of giving your best always of giving your 100% no matter what and if you let go of the burden behind you you will be much lighter you it will it will be much easier for you to go ahead and give this particular exam okay so i just wanted to say this before i continue uh, with our discussion today on uh, what to do with respect to mains for the upsc or kpsc exam see the strategy is the same there's absolutely nothing okay only difference is that now in kpsc you don't have optionals but in upsc you still do have optionals so you'll have to prepare for optionals as well but when it comes to kpsc you don't have that except that the strategy will always remain the same okay so i uh, i'm i'm pretty sure nobody is new here everybody is a veteran 
uh, I am pretty sure you would have at least put in a year, minimum one year at least, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping. So you don't need any introduction to what is uh, UPSC or uh, KPSC exam. The first and most important thing that you have to understand is, is that in your UPSC exam, mains is the most important aspect. Okay, please remember this. Mains is the most important. The reason I say this is because if you take prelims and interview, so prelims is before mains and interview is after mains, correct? Prelims and interview is not in your hands. When it comes to interview and prelims, luck matters the most. If luck is in your favor, you'll be able to clear prelims. If luck is in your favor, you'll be able to do very well in interview. You'll get a board which likes you, which likes your personality, you'll score well. But mains is entirely in your hands and it is entirely dependent on how much of hard work and effort you put in. So what is in your control, only mains is under your control. Prelims is absolutely not under your control. So great extent it is luck. Please remember that. So if you have to score, if you have to do well, where can you do that? You can only do it in mates. Okay. See, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure many of the things which I say today or which I say now, you might not agree with me. You might not be able to comprehend what I'm saying. But I was there in that position at some point in time. When many people used to tell me many things, I used to wonder how is this possible? This is not true. Okay, but after coming over, after crossing over to the other side, I do realize that many of the things which were told to me by my elders or my mentors or whoever was guiding me, okay, that it was true. Okay, so I did not realize that means is the most important thing. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I told you that I was not very confident with respect to my prelims, mains, or interview. Okay. Now, the problem was that uh, last year, if the prelims had not been postponed to October, I would have not written prelims last year. Okay. Due to some situation at home, entire May and June, I was occupied. I would have not written uh, prelims at all. Okay. But somehow it got postponed. Okay. And in October, I decided to give my prelims and everything went well. So what I'm trying to tell you is that after my prelims, I did not have much time. Since they had already postponed it, they cut short the amount of time that I had for mains. And uh, I was not able to completely uh, cover the entire syllabus before my prelims. So I had to do what uh, in Hindi we call this jugad, right? So how much ever is possible, I had to cover or do in this two months. So I thought my mains is not going to go well. So I will have to maximize in interview. Okay. Now, one advantage that I have is that I am, see, obviously, if you're going to an interview tomorrow where you have five, uh, what do you say, uh, experienced individuals sitting there trying to, you know, minutely, what do you say, dissect your personality. And your entire future, that is what we think when you go to the interview, my entire life depends on it. Okay, you would obviously be tense and worried as to what would happen. But my advantage was that I wasn't tensed with respect to an interview because I don't have any problem talking to a crowd or talking to elders or whatever it is. So you can make me sit in any interview if I don't have a problem. I, I, I can talk. Okay, so uh, that is my skill that I have. So I thought... It is in the interview that I have to maximize. I would have not done well. I have not done well in mains. So, but I can do very well in interview and I will have to maximize on my potential and I will have to score in interview so that I will be able to clear. I, I, did not, I didn't do my mains well, but I will have to do my interview very well. But uh, And on the day when the result came out, so I was very sure my mains marks would have been low. And it is my interview marks which pulled me up. But to my utter shock, it was the opposite way around. It was nothing but my main marks which brought me up. And it is nothing but my interview which brought me down to 222 rank. Uh, if you take my main score and the person who came first in Karnataka, uh, I think the gap is only about six marks. But uh, his interview marks is around 40 marks more than me. So if I had also got about 200 in my interview, I would have been in top 50. So my interview score is very low. Okay, I don't know why. Uh, 
uh, I can give many reasons as to why it went wrong, and that is what uh, I can give you many excuses, and that is what we always do. I don't know what went wrong in interview, but that is what happened. Even though I thought my interview went uh, okay, I should be able to score Antha, uh, but that it did not. So it is some. It is my main score which actually saved me. And but I was very, I was more confident with my interview than my mains. Mains is very very important. So if you come to UPSC, you have nine papers. Each and every paper is important. Even your language paper is important. And until and unless you dedicate, I don't know, hundred percent, two hundred percent towards mains, you cannot depend on interview. That is all I wanted to say. So please remember, mains is very very important. Okay. Now the second thing that I want to tell you is that. When I say follow but don't follow, what I mean is that always have an open mind. Take advice from whomever and whoever is going to give you advice, but only take up such advice and follow that advice that you are going to implement. See, when you come across people who have cleared UPSC, la, you will get, you will find generally you find two kinds of people. Okay, on one hand, you will have people who will tell you that, an in wode la. Okay. While traveling in metro or bus, I used to read newspaper. Okay, I was working eight to five a.m. Manek ban bit. I only read for two hours. Okay, engo art 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 ta. I cleared. We've put in two, three, four years after giving up everything else, and still we couldn't clear. You think only by reading two to three hours per day you'll clear? This is on one hand. Okay. On the other hand, you'll have people who will tell you. I have read 18 hours a day. Okay. I have also come across people who have told me I used to study with candles. You're you're not Vishweshwaraya. Okay, to study under the street lamp, street light, or candles, and say that you studied for 18 hours and this is what was the reason that you cleared. Okay, so these are the two kinds of people. One hand, they'll say that I have not studied anything. I could clear. It is my natural talent. Okay. On this hand, 18 hours a day I used to study. This is utter nonsense. This is utter nonsense. This is what people are going to tell you. So either you'll think, "Ha ha, I can also take up all my other passions, given three hours or four hours a day, I'll still clear." Or you'll think that you'll have to study for 18 hours. If you don't put in 18 hours of hard work, you'll not be able to clear. And I'll I'll give you an example. After I had written my mains, I. Uh, Came across a person, and she told me that she lived in she lives in Bangalore itself. She lives in Bangalore, but she took a PG in Chandra layout because she did not want to waste time traveling to and fro home, and it was not very far away. Aram says she could have gone and she could have come to Chandra layout. Okay, so she used to come to the study center. I also used to sit here itself in Chandra layout study center. So uh, she thought. Uh, why waste time traveling half an hour or 45 minutes uh, in Bangalore? So she, so she took a PG. Okay, so she used to come to the library at around 6 a.m. in the morning, and uh, she used to go back to her PG at about 10 or 11 in the night. Okay, and this entire duration she used to sit in the library. She had also cleared mains. Okay, so when she told me this, I felt so bad. I shrunk from within. Okay, I thought. These are the kind of people who clear UPSC exam. Okay, because I used to chill. I used to come at eleven. Okay, these people they would have come at six a.m. I would have come at eleven. I used to go back by eight or nine. Okay, I would not go back home after. Uh, I wouldn't study after going back home. Okay, I would come at eleven. I used to go back by eight or nine. And when she told me, she had also cleared mains. So she uh, told when she told me that from 6 a.m. till about 10 or 11 p.m. at night you you're studying in the library. I thought, okay, maybe this is the kind of hard work that you need, and these are the kind of people who actually clear. I'm no, I'm kind of this person who is actually wasting my time running behind you. Pace. I will never be able to clear on that. Okay, so today I'm here. Uh, I think she is giving her uh, attempt once more. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is that. If you go to Chandra layout, you whoever is preparing for UPSC loves to give Gyan advice. You go and stand in the footpath, Allah, one month old newborn baby in uh, UPSC will also give you 
advice on how to sit and study for UPSC. Okay, and whenever if anyone want, wanted to give me advice in Chandra Lev, I would happily take it. Okay, I would never tell them that ah no, I have given my attempt. Uh, I've been teaching also. I I know whatever you are trying to tell me. I know it, Illa. You want to give me advice? You give me advice. I will take it. But I would only implement those things which I wanted to, which I was comfortable in, which I was which was suitable to me. So in the end, what I'm trying to say is that you will get 110 advice. Everyone on YouTube is going to give you advice. Every news channel, sorry, uh, every uh, what do you say? Uh, coaching institute, every faculty over here, me also, I'm also giving you advice itself. So what I'm trying to say is that if anyone is giving advice, analyze it, comprehend it. If it suits you, follow it. If not, don't follow it. Okay, so it's an oxymoron over here. If you follow my advice, it is you're going against whatever I said. If you don't follow it, you're actually following my advice. Okay. So this is one thing that I want you to remember. Please do not run behind each and every advice that is actually given to you. It is not going to work out. You have to understand who you are and you'll have to work according to your own strengths and weaknesses. So I can't come and tell you what are your strengths and weaknesses. You'll have to do, you'll have to analyze and it'll only come through experience. So even for mains, there are 108 strategies. You can't do everything. Identify what is good for you and you'll have to do that. Now coming to your actual answer writing, mains paper. Okay. Now, when I was actually giving my mains and when I was actually practicing uh, mock writing, mock papers, answer writing, everything, I gave most importance to completing the paper. Then to presentation on how the answer is presented and third to quality. So what I'm trying to say is that People, uh, at least others whom I know, they run behind knowledge. I will gain more knowledge. I will read more. I will read more books. I will read uh, that subject, this subject. I will attend that class. I will garner or I will collect all the knowledge before my mains exam. And then I will be in a better position to write. And then I will be able to present myself. First, I need content or quality. And only then will I improve my presentation. And when I have quality and I'm able to present, obviously I'll be also be able to complete the paper. But I went the other way around. I gave a lot of importance to completing the paper first. Then next, when I was 100% confident that I am able to complete each and every paper within the stipulated time period, then I started to focus more on presentation. How am I presenting the answer? the structure, the format, the diagrams or maps, whatever it is, examples, my introduction, the quality of my conclusion, everything else came next. First and foremost, I concentrated on completing the paper well within time, that is three hours. And this helped me because when I gave my mains, the ethics paper was one of the longest ethics paper ever. It was so long, until and unless you had practiced enough, you would not be in a position to clear the paper, sorry, complete the paper. So my advice is please focus more on completing the paper because what my understanding is that no matter how much you improve the quality, see, you may collect so much of content, but in that time period, you will not be able to write everything. Neither will you be able to recollect everything under that pressure. So you cannot keep improving your knowledge, content, quality. It is not going to be productive. At some point in time, you'll have to stop. At some point in time, you'll have to stop because you have to be confident that whatever you've prepared for prelims, because you've cleared prelims out, you're, you're focusing on mates. So whatever you, knowledge that you've uh, gathered, uh, collected for prelims is enough and I will be able to build on that. And now is the time to Practice more so that I am able to complete the paper. You have to understand in schools and colleges, we used to write papers for 100 marks. This is a paper for 250 marks. That too, I'll have to write two papers in a single day. I'll have to write for 500 marks in a single day. So until and unless you have practiced enough, you will not be able to complete the paper. And this is what I did from the first day itself, the first paper that I took. 
I insisted that I complete the paper entire 250 marks within three hours. Then I moved on to my presentation. And once I was able to write good answers, then I started to, you know, maybe how can I improve my quality? So put in more examples, draw diagrams, put in more maps, structure it, everything else. Okay. So this is the third thing that I followed. Uh, any doubts here? You want me to uh, see, uh, I, I don't want this to be monotonous. If at all, at any point in time, you want to ask me something, you can always ask me. Okay, fine. Next is uh, about practice itself. Okay. So uh, as he said, uh, what I used to do is that uh, over a period of time, I started to write three papers in a single day. Okay. So on the exam day, you have to write two papers. Okay. So I decided I will write three papers. So writing three papers is like nine hours. And I will tell you honestly, I'm not now I'm not trying to make this up so that you know, uh, you might think that I work, you know, I'm some uh, so, uh, I, I told you about the two category, right? I don't wish to fall within these two categories. But I, I'm trying trying to honestly tell you what I did so that it might help you. Okay, so each and every paper that I wrote, I wrote it as if it is my actual exam that I have to do it. I gave in my 100% in each and every exam, the mock uh, papers that I used to write. And uh, before my mains and after my prelims, okay, I had written about 40 papers, okay, and it was as if I was writing four papers in a week. And few times I used to also write three papers in a single day. So the whole objective was that I get, I, I get into that, what do you say, space or mentally I prepare myself so much that no matter what happens, I will be able to write so that I don't get exhausted. Because on the exam, the actual exam, what happens today, you have a paper, tomorrow you have two papers, again, you have two papers, few days gap, again, you have two papers, again, you have two papers, you'll get exhausted physically and mentally, especially mentally, you'll not be able to carry forward. Okay, you, you try writing a, an actual mains paper for the first time. Okay, you would feel like you've, you've just come back from a marathon. Provided you give that, you've, you're trying to give that 100% as if it is your actual exam. So I prepared myself in such a way that on that exam day, I am not exhausted. Even if it is a second paper or even it is even if I have two more exams the next day, I am fresh, I am not exhausted, I will be able to do it. This is why I practiced more and more and more and more. And this actually helped me in completing the paper over a period of time, improve my presentation and also brought in quality. Please remember practicing is very important. And at the same time, I would also like to remind you that before my prelims, I had not written a single mock GS paper. I only started doing this after prelims. The reason I'm telling you this is because don't get scared that I have not studied before prelims. I have not practiced for mains. Will I be able to do it in this two and a half months to three months? I'm here to tell you it can be done. You will be able to write, you will be able to practice, you will be able to complete the paper. You can also write three papers. Okay, practicing is very important. You cannot give up on that because this is what is going to help you in your actual exam, prepare you for your actual exam. Is this clear? Okay, so uh, I think as you were telling me, uh, see, imagine writing for nine hours continuously. My, 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 my fingers used to be numb. It used to get swollen over here. And by the end of the third paper, I would be so exhausted. So that, that, that there's absolutely nothing else that can be done. Okay, so uh, what you asked me was that how do I analyze it? So this is where guidance comes in. Okay, so I used to take that paper and I used to go to someone else. And I used to sit with them and they used to analyze it for me. And they would tell me what is wrong, what is correct, how this particular answer could be improved. I would not analyze it. I would not sit and analyze everything. Okay, I, 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 I can't write my own answer and analyze it everything because whatever I have written, I, I would feel that it is, it is the correct. I'm pretty sure if you've given a prelims paper, as soon as you finish the prelims paper, you think that whatever you've marked is correct. Only when the answer key comes out, you realize that half the things are wrong. 
that is the same thing which happens in mains also because whatever you have written you feel i have done my best and this is the right answer but you need a third party someone else to tell you as to how you may improve how you can improve so i would okay this is an important thing and i'll be honest i have not been able to master this okay but if you are able to do this uh, well and good okay so write less but more now generally what happens whenever we are writing everyone including myself we like to write a hari katha okay but the problem is that nobody has patience nobody has patience to sit and read your answer paper you think just because you are writing this upsc or kpsc mains paper those people who are going to come and correct your paper are some medhavi they'll have all the oh papa na olle maga bandidane thumba kashta pattidane i will give my 100% in reading each and every word analyze each and everything that he or she has written and then i will evaluate it to the 100% with maximum efficiency absolutely not the way they used to correct your boards paper or whatever any other paper the same thing is going to happen here also correct don't you agree think about it it is nothing it is nothing special whoever is going to come and correct they are nothing but professors or lecturers from a university who are teaching there mostly and they are going to come and correct your papers so if you write long sentences okay or if you put in too much of information which they are not able because see nobody please understand they have to correct certain number of papers in a day and you are writing how many questions uh 20 questions in a paper they will not read a sentence the second time to understand what you have written they will read it once they understand good they don't understand even if you are correct they will consider it as wrong incorrect you will lose out on marks therefore it is very important that you write it in such a way that you write less but more shrink your sentences but it should have more content the sentence should be long but the content should be more the other advantage that you get in this is that you will be able to add more points you will be able to write more see the whole idea is that i've told i think uh, while taking class also i've have uh, told you in few answers for few questions you will have this much of information and for few questions you'll have absolutely no information in both the cases you'll have to write two pages or three pages and that is an art mains is an art it mains is nothing but an art even if you have this much of information you will have to concise it you'll have to compress it to two pages how will you do that for that you have to practice and for that you'll have to write less but more at the same time you you have absolutely no information you only have information to write three lines but even with this information you'll have to stretch it to two pages without allowing the examiner or the evaluator to realize that this person does not know the answer you have to write it in such a manner that the evaluator will read and like ah very good answer you would have not written anything this will come with practice don't think that tomorrow ha huh, see I, uh, i understand what is going to happen whenever uh, it has happened to me also whenever you listen to someone talk or whenever you watch a youtube video or whatever it is you think that from tomorrow next day onwards i will do it i'll give my 100% i will do it this time anta it is not going to happen tomorrow you go to go you go and sit and study okay you will sit for 6 hours 8 hours but you will not be able to sustain it you not be consistent it is not going to happen so understand the reality be more practical rather than you know uh, focusing on fantasy saying that i will study for so many hours consistent it is not going to happen we all get depressed we all have uh, distractions we all have many other things to worry about it is the same thing with everybody else you are not special i am not special but here you'll have to practice you'll have to develop this art or else it is not going to be possible okay so here uh so hashtag let it be short i just wanted to give you an example so for example there is a question on uh, physical geography okay and the question might uh, have been about the various weathering processes okay so you might write about physical weathering chemical weathering and then you come to biological weathering 
so many of us what do we do we try to read from textbooks and we always try to reproduce the same okay this is what we have done in schools also and college and this is what we will try to do over here also so then we can write biological weathering okay a dash and then you'll write the group of processes that are caused by or assisted by the presence of vegetation or to a lesser extent animals including root wedging and production of organic acids i'm not kidding you try and write your mock paper you will do the 